Welcome to the 2022-2023 Science Olympiad season. I hope everyone is excited to build bridges again this year and hopefully attend in-person competitions. The Division B and C rules are very different this year. This video is about Division C only, so if you're looking for Division B inspiration, please check out some of my other videos. Aside from the normal differences in rules that happen every year between the divisions, like the 35 versus 45 centimeter span for bridges, this year has a very specific rule difference that completely changes the bridge design and makes things much more interesting and challenging compared to previous years. The loading block needs to be less than one centimeter above the plane made by the top of the test supports. The base width also has to be greater than 10 centimeters, but that is not as critical of a design change as the loading block position. One obvious design choice might be to try and make something like a conventional road bridge. If you think about it, all the bridges we drive over support the load at the bottom of the structure, like what is required this year. I know from my previous experience that road bridge style designs are not the most efficient for these competitions historically, mainly because they are over designed for the given rules. A road bridge is designed to support a continuous load across the entire span of the bridge. The Science Olympiad rules always specify a single location for the loading block and therefore we can focus the design on supporting the load at just that location. I want to say right off the bat that I've never built bridges to this specification before, so what I'm about to present may not wind up being the best possible idea, and I strongly encourage you to think about other ideas and play around with your own designs. I was able to come up with something that works fairly well and has plenty of room to improve, and my gut feeling is that it would be very competitive with some more optimizations. Here is the design I came up with. The basic idea was to start with a very well-known conventional design and adapt it to hold the loading block in the correct location. As you can see, there is something like a balloon gondola or platform hanging from the middle of the bridge that supports the 5x5 loading block. At first you might think that this idea is crazy, as the load will potentially swing around and will induce all sorts of additional loading modes at the top of the bridge, and you'd be right. But as it turns out, with some clever reinforcement and the use of proper materials, you'll see that this design can hold over 15 kilograms, and the entire bucket system only adds about one gram to the overall mass of the bridge. You might also assume that this design is fairly difficult to build, and again, you'd be correct. I used three different custom 3D printed jigs to build it, and here you can see a couple pictures from the final assembly jig of a previous build. It takes me about two and a half hours to build one of these, which is at least double what it took compared to last year's design. In the future, I will create a series of videos that show all the detailed steps involved in building this, so keep an eye out for those if you're interested. Here are my notes for this specific build. Whenever I build a device, I like to keep track of everything that goes into it, so it's not only reproducible, but you can use that data to make further optimizations with later builds. I'll go over more of the specific details of the components in the build videos in the future, so don't worry too much about the exact details just yet. Here is the bridge on the scale right before testing, and it weighs 7.74 grams. For those looking very closely, you might notice a build mistake in this picture. I'll highlight it here. I had to reattach one of the primary tension members to the other side of the leg. This was because it got stuck to my assembly jig and I wasn't able to pop it off without destroying the connection. After two and a half hours of work, I decided to just attach it to the other side of the leg, cross my fingers, and see how it did. It turns out it didn't matter at all except for adding a tiny bit of extra weight due to the re-gluing process. That just goes to show that even someone who has built hundreds of these devices still occasionally have screw-ups, but sometimes they can be worked around and not all is lost. If you are new to my channel, this is my testing table. I am pouring sand in a funnel off the left side of the screen and it's going down the PVC pipe into the bucket. I custom built a loading cell which dynamically measures the mass as it's being loaded and retains the maximum value when the device fails. This means that it's not important to stop the sand from entering the bucket after failure like it is in normal competitions. The display is measuring the load of everything below the load cell hook, which doesn't account for the dead weight above which includes the loading block and chain. In this case, that math is 116 grams, which gets added to the final display weight for the total mass held. 
During the entire test, you can see the loading block swinging around. I was worried about this, but as it turns out, the design was strong enough that it didn't matter, at least not for this particular build. Having the second person to help stabilize the bucket during testing would really help minimize the movement and might be very important as the bridge gets optimized. Here's the high speed footage for the test. It was shot at 4185 frames per second and the playback is shown at 50% speed. You can clearly see the first failure point is a clean break in the tension member on the front left side. That is not the tension member that I had to reattach and it's the wood failing and not the joint itself. Because this bridge held almost 16 and a half kilograms and the tension member failed first, that means that almost every aspect of the bridge is a good candidate for material optimization. I don't have a great feel for what is possible with its design yet, but bridges in the 6 to 7 gram range could be a reasonable goal. Again, this is only a design that came to me by adapting earlier conventional bridge designs and by no means is the only way to approach this year's rules. Please reach out to me if you have success building this design or have other suggestions as I'd love to hear what your teams are doing this year. I hope you enjoyed seeing this bridge and that it helps you get a jump start on this season's competitions. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any specific questions. Thanks for watching and good luck this season.